and I've never confessed this to anybody ever. Gotten a lot of people that probably, they think I'm just this terrible. It really hurt us as a company because if I was in your shoes, I'd be like, okay, what the heck just happened? What do you think your experience working with the company has been? Kelly's intuition is, it's kind of scary. She says that it, it's a gift from God, but it's kind of scary. She kind of knows things. <laughs> that was not cute back then. <laughs> okay, but now- He no, didn't no, no. deny it, that's crazy. Do you have a boyfriend? <laughs> I'm not the type of person that's money motivated, and I think you know that. And I don't believe that business model survives five years. I think people need to get rid of them. The thing is, college is not put in place, and jobs do not look at, oh, you went to college as you're smarter than. They take it as, oh, so you can actually go through rigorous curriculum and come out on top. You are impressive. Everybody is a slave to somebody. That idea of freedom is not a thing. What really is within? All right, we're gonna open up our Bibles, everybody. I think a lot of people feel that a woman who makes money wants a man who makes money, and that's quite possibly. One of the biggest misconceptions, I think I've fallen in love with, like, love. I'm never winking again. That was, you know, that, <laughs> this is over. What's it gonna do for you knowing how much I made? Kelly. Mm-hmm. Are you into girls? Do you think I'm into girls, kid? I do not think that you are, unless you're about to tell me differently. Good evening, everyone. So today we're doing a video that's probably going to make me the most uncomfortable I've ever been on social media ever. I asked you guys to ask me personal questions because I realized that most people don't really know me. They think I'm just this girl that I guess just talks about trading and people have been asking to hear more about me. And I was like, you know what? I don't really want to like tell the whole world, but you know what? I'll tell the whole world, whatever. Today we have the wonderful, wonderful, wonderful Hayden. Hayden Young, he is absolutely amazing. Hayden has been someone that I've known for, I think over a decade now, since middle school. We were both the same height. Uh, for reference, I am five feet, eight inches, and Hayden's like 5'10", so. You know, we're about the same height, but, um, <laughs> but we're gonna get right into the questions, and um, Hayden uh, also is a part of our amazing company. He's, he's one of those people that just, they're so skilled at everything that you're just kinda like, where can I put you? Because everything you do, you're gonna crush, and probably even this podcast. We'll find out he's hosting his own podcast soon, but I guess we'll get right into the videos. Um, I said the videos. I'm so used to filming. We've been filming all day. I guess we get right into the questions. So I'm kind of nervous for them. I can feel my stomach uh, with the butterflies, but we can. Uh, all right. We can <clears throat> well, these were some questions, that obviously, some people had for you. Yeah. That we all want to know the answer to. So starting out with the first question, Kelly, did you drop out of school? Oh, wow. That was a, uh, okay. I wouldn't call it dropped out. I think that's such a negative connotation. Um, but I did withdraw from school. Uh, it was a funny story. God actually told me to withdraw from school and like people hear that and they're like well, what do you mean god told you and i'm like well you know so i was basically praying one day and you know i was asking him like it's hard for me to, sh to juggle this business and to also juggle school and i know you gave me the business so i'm like what do i do and you know i was i was praying i got a bible verse in my head and the bible verse was first timothy four and I Raphael, look how sweet this is thank you Raphael. you really care about it Raphael brought us food shout out to Raphael. But yeah, he put First Timothy 4, and, and it, I kind of just have it everywhere. I was wearing it on my necklace earlier, but it broke yesterday. So look at that. Look how you know frustrating that is. Yeah, and, and so when I read that, I realized that he wanted me to really put my talents and my, my gift and my purpose into really helping people. And so I kind of so had to take the risk, and my parents uh, were not fans of it. <laughs> but, you know, I was just leading in blind faith, which I think is really important. So you think that uh, the reason you dropped out was because of the business and what you were starting and trying to start, right? Not just because of yeah. school is harder, I don't like school. No, I actually wanted to be like, oh my gosh, I, I graduated a millionaire, you can do it too. So I was really trying, um, but then at a point I got locked out of my school email because it was like hacked. And I don't know why Texas Tech, are they gonna fight me for saying that? I don't care. But like Texas Tech, there was just like a period where they had like a bunch of phishing problems. So people like were hacking in emails. And oh, yeah. so they locked, you remember that? Yeah. Yeah, they locked my account for like two weeks and I couldn't do any homework. And so I was so behind. And so my GPA just started falling like crazy. And it was. All right, well, moving on, Kelly, what yeah. was your biggest disappointment? My biggest disappointment? Uh, I think I talked about this on, um, I had a, confessions of a doer video I filmed where people like ask questions or confess stuff that they did and I kind of helped them but I think it was honestly how I went about not how I went about but what I had to learn 
through Cash Capital, which was the old company, not the new one we have now. But um, yeah, like the group, I, I felt like for a lot of people, they came in with this burning fire and this burning passion to learn how to trade. And I've never done a course. So like Cash Capital itself wasn't a course. It was a group that had a lot of information. And then you could talk to people, but it wasn't organized as much as it should have been. And unfortunately, I had to learn that the hard way. I felt a lot of people came in with this burning fire and this burning passion. And they were excited to learn how to trade because they saw my video or they saw something somewhere. And then that fire just kind of dimmed because they realized, like, this isn't the effective way to know how to actually learn this, which is why now we're actually building out an effective way. But that, to me, was kind of really disappointing. But I don't want to say it was a regret. So I like the fact that, that person said disappointment because I had to learn that and go through that. You know, I had to unfortunately disappoint you know a couple thousand or tens of thousands of people hopefully not that large but go through that with them to understand what it's like to impact millions which is kind of the goal or our actual number for next year which you know what that is but all right yeah, yeah. all so, right who left that worked with you on cash capital and why <laughs> now she's just gonna act like she's just gonna continue eating and act like she didn't hear it <laughs> I think the food is really good i think the food is so good oh my gosh bulgogi is so like actually bulgogi is so good i don't know what how they it? marinate beef it's like what? the beef i don't know they marinate it and you said like, french fries earlier well that one they added french fries too i don't think there's a point in talking about who left i think we can cover why and i've never confessed this to anybody ever well not to anybody but like i've never said it publicly um, because I do believe that everyone came for a certain time in a certain season and not everyone that comes into your life, into your business, into your family, hopefully not family because that's tight, but is going to be there forever. Not every opportunity that comes your way is going to be the best opportunity at that time. And so for the majority of people that kind of came and left, it was, and I'm, I'm going to ask you this question. I want you to answer it completely honestly, you know, and you will not be in trouble if you don't answer it the way that you probably think you should but before i answer that i want to ask like what do you think your experience working with the company has been because i don't want people to you mean over the years yeah because i've gotten a lot of people that probably they think i'm just this terrible boss you could say if i am so when i you know but. when i first started working with cash capital it felt a lot more like a gig like i was uh <laughs> You know, I was a support member. I, it didn't feel super professional, right? Yeah. And I even told you a couple different scenarios where like, Kelly, this happened or whatever. And so I, you know, it almost kind of felt like a gig and whatever. Um, and I think that a lot of the people had more personal interest, um, more yeah. selfish motivations, unfortunately. Versus like, if you look at it compared to now, like it seems like that the people that are with Cash Capital um, that are still here in the... Or trade it, I mean, sorry. Cash Capital is still the mother company, yeah. so Cash works. Capital the mother company trade. Yeah. I've been saying Cash Capital for, what, three, three years? Two years, three, um, two, two years, and a half, yeah. three, yeah. So, but that are with trade it now, it just seems a lot more like a team and like that we really are not so much like selfishly motivated, but we're actually trying to push this out for people and to actually like change the lives of people, you know? Yeah. And not so much about, you know, when am I going to get this? Why do I not already have this? Yeah. I just wanted you to give that honest opinion because I do agree the same. I think at first it was just kind of like, oh, we're doing this fun thing where we can just. And to be, you, to you be know. honest with you, like 100 percent honest with you, like and to even like speak on myself, like during yeah. that time, like a lot of that stuff can even kind of rub off on you. Like I've always been such a non-selfish person. But when a lot of the people surrounding you have kind of the wrong idea, the wrong, you know, motivation behind yeah. what we're doing, it can kind of start to rub off on you. And that's all that you're hearing from your own team, you know? Yeah. And, but now when you have like other guys surrounding you, as people say, iron sharpens iron, you know? So when you have other guys surrounding you that have the same intention to build out a platform to help other people and things like that and truly teach them the, the proper way to, to trade and to go about things, it's, you know, it's I agree. And I think different. it's like you said, bad company corrupts good character. And so, you know, what I noticed is there were a lot of people who unfortunately kind of looked at the numbers that weren't really true, like we we were on discord and discord will say we have 18,000 people we don't have 18,000 people right and so they'll start doing the math like okay if 18,000 people are paying this much and we're making this much you could pay me this much I'm like I wish we were doing those numbers. I wish like I think we'd all be living really nice but um you know I, I think it was just a matter of some people saw what was possible through somebody else and they were like well if someone can do it then I can do it and I would never stop somebody from going down that path but I think the only place where I was very upset about it is I felt like this isn't about you it's not even about me it's about helping these tens of thousands of people who genuinely have a passion and if the second that it's not benefiting you in its entirety or based on what you believe it should because some people believe they should make 10 million dollars a year from a company that doesn't even do that you know so if that's what people's mindset is and that's what a lot of people's were they're like well I'm gonna leave and so we saw like it just was 
person after person after person would leave and then try and go do the same thing and try and take our customers. And, you know, like I, I like I said, I don't know what God has for everyone. I don't know the, his purpose for them. That may be the purpose, but I just think it's very valuable that people understand what their gift is, understand what their purpose is and follow that and not just try to say, that person makes a lot of money doing that. I'm good at that. I should do it too. And there was someone who left the company recently that I really respected because they, you know, had a conversation with me and they were like, I'm super good at this. I'm just not passionate about it. Like, it doesn't matter how much money you could pay me. I just can't do this. And that's you the know? thing is like, I always thought that it was like kind of standard that, you know, you gave a, a notice before you left, yeah. um, which is something that we didn't <laughs> see. We you usually don't want to leave people high and dry. So it really hurt us as a company because people would just leave, never say anything to anybody, just disappear. And then they were like, why is everybody leaving Kelly? Kelly must be firing everybody. And, and that's like, the thing with like traders. I feel like a lot of like really good traders and stuff, like they've never really had a job like true. because they start making all this money. Like, why do you need a job? Why would you ever go get a job if you can trade for a living, you know? And so a lot of these things, like, you know, telling people that, you know, hey, cash in about two weeks, which is fine. You know, whether you have a better opportunity, you don't enjoy what you're doing, whatever, absolutely fine. But like, you just don't just leave, you know, and nobody then you're gone and nobody, TVs, right. They just <clears throat> disappeared and then they went on social media and they were like, oh, you can find me here. You can, and I'm like, oh my gosh, not even a thank you. And for every single person, um, I sent them edible arrangements and like a card, like, I'm sorry to see you go. Cause I think that's just the noble thing to do is like, even if you're not going to say anything to me, I obviously still wish you the best, but I do think yeah. it and wasn't the best way to go about things. And it really hurt us and our yeah. reputation and made us look like we were the bad guys. And that's something that growing up my mom and dad kind of always instilled in me is that you know you just don't burn bridges it's just not something that you want to do i don't know i don't really see the benefit and why some of the things were done the way they were done but you know but I, it's like i said god puts people in for a season and a certain reason and i think their season was just up and you know things are great now and i still wish them the best but oh yeah i still know, i mean i like the way we the thing operate. is is um i don't know it was kind of it was kind of tough because they were I was close with a lot of them, working for them for three years, and so yeah. I would still consider a lot of them my friend, you know. But it was just, it was tough to see them happen. And honestly, like, it was tough to see that what they did to the company and what they did to you, but they also did it to me. Because then I was sitting there like, oh, my gosh. No, so. I was I was really shocked when, um, when I saw, like, the people that still stayed. And it was only, I think there's only two people standing right now that still, oh, three. Three, three people. And it's like... Because I was in that moment, I remember I was on the phone with our operations manager and then you had texted me and it was like two people left at the same time. And I was like, OK, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> like, what am I supposed to do? And I was just like, everyone in this company might just leave. And I couldn't blame anyone if they decided like everyone's leaving. I should leave, too, because I don't know what is going on, because if I was in your shoes, I'd be like, OK, what the heck just yeah. happened? And to be honest, I think like with that being said, what you just said, I think that's something that we can learn from is that we like have to be more involved as to what they're talking about and what they're mentioning. And so that a lot of these things will come to us first before they spread to the whole group, but like, cause you didn't even know about it and it spread around the whole group before you even knew about it. And then next thing, everybody's on the same page, but you, and then everybody's gone. And so I, like, just, and I don't know how you go about it, you know, maybe doing like monthly, like, Hey, what's going on? How do you feel? Yeah. Are you happy with everything? You know? So. But you know, what's crazy is I, I was doing that and I felt very blindsided because like I was doing the check-ins I was like where can we improve on where do you feel like this this and that and it, oh everything's good yeah I'm cool I mean I feel like you can do more of this okay I'll do more of that no problem okay and then just boom so I was like when I say I was just as blindsided as everybody else I had no idea I had no idea you know and but you know what's crazy is five days before it happened I sensed it yeah, like I, I felt like me. God had told me like yeah you know, like they have to go and it just boop, boop, boop. And guys, I, I like, want to tell you all Kelly's <laughs> intuition is it's kind of scary. She says that it, it's a gift from God, but it's kind of scary. She kind of knows things but like I just knows things. Though. All I right. Don't know. It's like a superpower. Are you ready for the next one? Yeah, well, I'm eating this chicken. I hope it's not something crazy because I promise I'm going to spit this chicken out. Kelly, you want to help people. Why charge 15000 for a program? Wow. I don't think I even know of that program. Do you think that going to college gives you a better chance no. of finding a great job uh yeah oh you spread your chicken oh you're good yeah i think it does you do yeah. but you do understand that college is like anywhere from 45 to 60 to 100k yeah i think it does because that just having that degree like i mean you can go out like you know go try and find a job yeah whether it's waiting tables or whether it's you know you start like a I can't remember the word for it, but like a craftsmanship kind of thing where you're doing like plumbing or welding or whatever, right? Where you don't really need to go to school. You can go to trade school or whatever, or you can go to school and become a doctor or a lawyer or a finance guy or whatever and come out making over a hundred thousand dollars. And 
just because you have the degree. Do I think it all 100% makes sense? I don't really know yet. Yeah. But then again, I don't think college is for everybody. I don't think college was for you. I don't think college is for some of these other people, you know. And some people are absolutely fine going and waiting tables, which is an awesome job, which I did as well. Yeah. And so like I said, I don't think college is for everybody. But do I think that it, your question was, gets you a better job? Yeah, absolutely. No, I agree with you. And, and that's kind of how I thought, as you know, with the new company that we're, we're no longer focusing on what everyone sees as normal and what we're doing, nobody's ever done. And so a part of that, maybe 15K, like we, we don't even have our prices set yet we're still building and really trying to really make this product really good but um a part of that and that would only be if we have what we'd call our concierge service which is when somebody is going to meet with you at at the minimum once a week go over your trading for the week go over what you can improve on you can talk to them each and every single day if you want to you know like you for can, how long well no like you can text them all, all day long I, I mean no when, how long would the service be oh three months so you can do it for three months, what right? People, what people need to understand is like, first of all, college classes, I will have hundreds of people in my lecture room and averaged out each one of my classes, my, um, what's it called? The person who helps you with your classes and stuff. You're each assigned one. Oh, your TA? Yeah. Your teacher's assistant. Yeah, that's what it's called. whatever it is. She told me, because I was like, trying to motivate myself not to miss classes freshman year. Yeah. And she was like, what you need to understand is each one of your classes is a minimum of $40. And I have a couple hundred people oh, you're in the room. talking about advisor. And I then, advisor. yeah, financial, yeah. or not financial advisor, Just but your advisor. my advisor, yeah. yeah. And then on top of that, when I do tutoring and stuff, like for, for one of my classes, I had to take a tutor. Yeah. And the tutor was like uh, $100 an hour to get tutored. That's like the job of teaching and it's not just the fact that I'm sitting there giving you an hour of my time. It's the fact that I had to spend such a long time learning the information to give to you, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's not just like, you know, like I'm coming and I'm giving you a service for an hour. It's like I spent an immaculate amount of time yeah. gathering this information and this. now I'm sharing it to you. And then I, you also have to, it's, you're almost like a therapist in a sense because you're a friend to them. So you have to take in everything about them. And I think what people also don't understand is everyone has a personal life. So these people also have family. They have friends. Like they have a life. And they are taking time out of their life to really cater to you. And I do not think that I could ever put a proper price on somebody making the sacrifice to take away from their family or their friends or just creating memories with the people they love. And so that cannot be a cheap service, especially when it is going to be a one-on-one -on -one thing. And the thing know? is, is if it wasn't a cheap service and then everybody does it, then we couldn't even do it. You know, yeah. like it has to be more of an exclusive thing. Otherwise, we couldn't even do it. Yeah, the concierge. But we also have other products that are meant... For right. people who are more getting into entry level. And then worst comes to worst, YouTube. Like, you know, when people say, oh, well, you're charging this much, but you want to help people. I'm like, I did. Like, I made a YouTube free yeah. that you could still go to and learn a whole lot of information. And then you can also look at other people on YouTube. And that's the I thing is the information is out there. It's been out there, you yeah. know, whether it's YouTube, wherever it is, the information's out there. Now, there is a lot of false information, but the there information is, is out there. Reading. And that's what we're, I think that's something that we're trying to do is... First of all, get the false information out. And second of all, not make it to where you have to go through all the trials and errors that, you know, I myself and Kelly had a great starting uh, when she started trading. Yeah. But she did have her trials and errors as well. And so, you know, to minimize those and to make it easier. And no, I agree with you on that. But we're not trying to hurt anyone. We're not trying to be greedy. We're just trying to value the people that need to value you. And I've never heard anybody complain about paying $1,500 to text people. That's what phones do. Yeah. You know, so. All right. Um, what's something you can't live without? And while you tell us, I'm actually going to think of something that I think that you can't live without. Oh, I already know. I want you to answer that first. Taro. <laughs> <laughs> That's so crazy. I, I was like, what can't? I was like, Taro. I was literally going to say we should say it at the same time. <laughs> that was not it. staged at all, by the way. No, that wasn't staged. Um, no, yeah. Taro and me are locked in. She literally told me, she was like, Hayden, I have two a day and then I was at the office like uh last week or two weeks ago and she's like okay let's go get taro and so we're like okay so we go and get taro right keep in mind she's the only one that actually gets taro or I think one other person did and we go drive somewhere else I think we got food or something and then on the way back she's like okay stop by taro again I ordered my second one I was like what <laughs> you ordered your second one no it's a problem but you know it's so good it's very healthy it's a vegetable and it's sweet. And I'm like, yeah, I, I don't know. It's just so good. I, I don't know. When I had it, because I had it every once in a while. I used to have it like every once in a blue moon. And I remember one time I had it and I was like, why is this thing so good? And so I searched up, is taro healthy? So I was like, if I was to have this every day, would it be a problem? And it was like, it's so You better healthy. hope that thing's right. 
<laughs> well, I mean, it's a sister to sweet potato, so I really do yeah. hope so. And it, it has really natural fibers, so I wonder if that's the reason why every time I <clears> eat, <throat> I'm like, my stomach, you know. And Hayden knows that every time I eat, my stomach wow. is Wow, yeah. <laughs> she has the weakest through. stomach. Um, but what's crazy is lip gloss and Vaseline are like, i show you guys my lip gloss. You gotta, I have like four of these in my purse right now because you just never know. But, uh, me and lip gloss are just locked in. I just, I, I can't not have lip gloss. I just, I have to have it. And Vaseline cause I need to not be ashy. All right. Next up. Uh-oh. Do you have a boyfriend? <laughs> I wish. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do not have a boyfriend as of the current moment. You know, there is one guy that if he stopped playing, I'd want to, I'd, I'd want him to be my husband. You know, that's not my decision or my choice, but. Stopped playing? <laughs> oh, stopped playing. I thought you meant like if playing sports. No, no, no. Oh, oh I was like, I don't dang. Know. I know. I was like, playing. stopped playing, playing sports. I was like, athlete. I am definitely the stopped woman that like, games. the second he said stop, I will stop. If that man said jump, I'll ask him how high. <laughs> like, if he's hungry, I will cook whatever he wants. You know, he could throw his underwear wherever he wants to, and I will clean it up and, and do his laundry and fold his laundry for him. <laughs> you know? Sounds crazy. But, no, I would. But, yeah, you know, I'm just being a patient little woman over here. Well, does he patient know? Patient bunny. I, I mean, I think he knows. Kind of. I think so. I mean, if he's watching this, then maybe he knows now. Maybe he knows now. For sure. Or maybe there's a couple of them that are think like, oh, is it me? Maybe there's a couple. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Kelly, why do you ignore your DMs when genuine people reach out to you? Hayden, come see my DMs. Come see my DMs. Because I get this question all the time. We're going to go to my general. These are DMs I actually answered that like I just can't get to everybody. Here's where the kicker actually is. We're going to go to hidden requests because for some reason I get so many DMs that they all go to hidden. And watch how recent these are. 56 minutes, 2 hours, 6 hours, 6 hours, 8 hours, 9 hours, 9 hours, 9 hours, 14 hours. Like what? I would show I would show the camera. You can see all the blue. Like, I looked at some of them, some of them I just can't answer. Them. And then, oh, oh my gosh, I just opened one. Now I have to. Oh, they just sent me the real. Some people do that too. They use my DM as like places to send themselves videos. Some people write a lot of love messages. These are my requests. Like it, and these are all just so, re like there's just so many that I'm like, I, I don't know if you guys think I'm robotic, but what I understood, because I used to be that person that would watch a YouTube video, I like somebody on YouTube and I'd go message them like, hey, you know, I'm looking for a mentor or I love your videos. And like that moment when you press send, you're like, oh my gosh, like what if they respond? What if they respond? What if they, and you keep refreshing and refreshing every single day and like a day has passed, two days, three days. And you're like, well, why are they posting? But they haven't responded. I know they've seen my message, but it's like, they, haven't. they probably haven't, <laughs> yeah. you know? And, and so I understand that when people send that, they feel like they sent you a message and they don't see it as thousands of people sent you a message. They just see it as I sent you a message. So I don't, and, and again, I don't know if some people are genuine. I like to assume everyone is, but I just, I try to answer as many questions as possible in as many videos and, you know, get to people when I can, but I won't see everyone, so. How is dating now that you make so much money? I was filming a video about this yesterday about how some people. Wait, what? did you date before you made so much money? Do you have something to compare it to? Because the question is how did, or I guess how has dating changed or how is dating now that you make so much money? So did you date before you started making so much money? I... I had one boyfriend. Oh, Lord have mercy. If my father watches this, he's going to fight me. <laughs> um, I, I like to be very nice about people, even when they've done me wrong. But um, that relationship taught me a lot. And I felt like I really gave a lot and tried a lot to someone who just simply didn't appreciate me. And, you know, wanted other things and other people that I just, you know, I can't live up to all these people that you want me to be. And, and then on top of that, when you're actively pursuing them and it's like, you know, it can really hurt a person and break a person. So I felt what that was like. And, th and then also think about this. Yeah. When you were in high school, did you have people like throwing themselves at you? Like, oh my gosh, Kelly. Hayden, you could be honest on this one. I was, I was not cute back then. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but now what he I'm saying is now he no, no, no. didn't deny it. That's crazy, <laughs> Kelly. I barely remember that. I like I knew of you, and I think we had an English class together. But in history. high school, like you didn't go to the same high school as me. Yeah, but in so. middle school, I was. I can show you this picture of me from middle school. <laughs> I've a, seen it. A year or so ago. <laughs> <A year or so. laughs> but now, just by going through your DMs, 
the change from what you just said to now, like I saw like, not the DMs, but the questions, All like the questions. half of them are like, are you looking for a man? Are you looking for a Haitian man? Are you look? do you want to <laughs> date me? <laughs> like, and like now you have guys that are just like, please date me. I, I think it's one, since my audience is wi- wider, because I don't believe in this planet that anybody's ugly. I think everyone's cute to somebody. So I think I just didn't have enough people that thought I was cute back then, even though I really thought I was cute back then. But I also think it's that when people hear my intellect, like I noticed one thing guys like is just a girl that seems like she's trying to do something and that she's actually going somewhere and not just going to sit around and be like, you know, wine and dine me and shower me. And like, that's just not me. Like I, I really, like my whole goal is to retire young so that I could literally just be a housewife. And I don't care if people are like, well, that's boring because I want to be there for my kids. I want to be active for my kids. And I know your mom was like similar. I had a whole conversation yeah. with her. Like mm-hmm. you were making all this money before you got married. You got married. You had kids. And then like you stayed home. And she was like, yeah, but I enjoyed it. You Not know? me. She's talking about my mom. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> no Hayden you were saying pregnant. you. <laughs> no. Hayden, yeah. I was saying you like to her. But um, no. So I noticed that afterwards, guys are definitely more interested. Men that I should never pull a day in my life. Um, have been very interested in me guys that just like are models I've had some celebrities some athletes like stuff like that but I just like the thing is is like what my mom has always told me is like like yeah you can find somebody and be attracted to them and stuff but the way they look you're not always like the attractiveness it shouldn't be solely because of the way somebody looks like you have to be like their best friend because you're going to be with them forever and as you age naturally you're not going to you know look like you once did and so just being like also like super close friends and just loving being around each other and enjoying yeah. each other is super important. No, I agree. I agree. And I think that's, that's like the key thing because I have seen a lot of like articles where somebody gets in a car accident and then, you know, they're still with their partner, even though they're paralyzed or like they're basically what they'd call like a vegetable where you're kind of brain dead, which you still exist. And people still love them up and down because they fell in love with who that person was. And I know in this day and age, people lead with their body and their face first versus actually exactly. leading with who they and, are. And a lot of people will say, oh my gosh, I love this girl that I met a week ago. You love her because the way she looks and because, you know, you whatever know her body her. is. But the thing is, is true love is like, like you said, like if somebody gets in a wreck or when yeah. they get old and they no longer look the same, do you still love them? You know, like and love is not, love is hard. It's not easy. It's not, yeah, it's, not yeah. it's easy when somebody looks absolutely stunning and they're, you know, they have a good body and they're whatever, whatever, whatever. Yeah. But can you love them through this, this and that? Yeah. And I, I think um, another thing is that I like to argue that you don't really know somebody until you've seen them in all motions. You see them happy, you see them sad, you see them angry, like not even angry at you, angry at something else, because then it's kind of a reflection of how they'll they'll treat you. And then, of course, angry at you. And I think a lot of relationships, it starts off with just happy, happy, happy. And you barely have had like your first argument or something like that. So I don't think it's I just I just don't. People throw the I love you so fast, and I'm like, ah, you're infatuated with them. I don't yeah. know if you love them, but... Yeah. What do they have next up for me? Don't scare me. Don't scare me. Don't scare me. Don't scare me. Why did you close your group? Oh. And I think you touched on it earlier I in did the question. Touch on it and I just pulled my... Why did I close my group? Because I felt like we weren't serving people in the way we should have. Um, we were the number one group in the world for any type of discord or group related to trading. But just for me, it just wasn't. I'm not the type of person that's money motivated. And I think you know that like very well from knowing me. A lot of people won't know that because they don't know me. But I just, I don't care about the money. Like, I believe in spending money on experiences, not things. I will cry about spending money on things. And I love spending money on people. But, you know, I just felt like where we were operating at, I was like, this isn't something I want to do. And then I was like, do we survive five years? And I don't believe that business model survives five years. I don't believe Discord groups will last within the next five years. I think people need to get rid of them as soon as possible. But there are a lot of people who are going to keep them up despite knowing that they don't actually help because of the fact that they're making so much money. Mm -hmm. And there are some that, that, you know, obviously are going to be beneficial but for the vast majority, somebody makes $5,000 in one day and they say, I'm starting a group, get my course, get this. And, you know, I'm just like, that's not actually helping somebody. Like, I do not like courses. I do not like groups. Granted, I've had a group. Like, that's coming from someone who had the number one. And, like, I just, I know it doesn't help people in the way anyone preaches that it does. And I felt really off about that. And then, two, I've never had a course. But, like, I've seen people who preach courses as passive income and it should never be seen as that. Like, if a customer watches your video and then they email you, you should be able to respond immediately. They leave a comment, you should be able to respond immediately. Like there's no reason someone should pay for something 
and they cannot get a response from you. And people will be like, oh, it's passive income. I just have my virtual assistants answering everything. And I'm like, you're the person with the skill. You're the person that said, trust what I'm saying. So you should be the one helping them. Because courses are more personal than an actual business, even though they'll call it a business. Curriculums. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Curriculum is our thing. Oh. Courses oh. is social media's oh, thing. Okay, okay. But um, yeah, I just, I didn't like it. And I felt like education wasn't really being pushed. And I would love to see what somebody truly following proper education, like what that could look like in terms of actually changing someone's life and expanding their brain. And I just felt like the, all the discords are literally built around trading signals. And, and it's signals like, it's so deception. Are, it's like such a deception. Like yeah. you think, you think it's one thing and it's just not. The signals are not it. And I used what? to send signals and they were, like, I had like a, a 90% win rate on my And what I tell people but. is, all these, you know, millionaire traders, right? If they were able to send their signals and you were able to take those signals 100% and get their profit out of it, right? Then they would also be making an insane amount of money. Yeah. If it was possible to reciprocate that kind of, you know, I post my play, you take it, and it works, everybody in the world would now quit their job because who wouldn't want to make a million dollars sitting on their couch trading at home? Mm -hmm. It just doesn't, like, it's not there. Like, you can't post a signal and have somebody take it without knowing why they entered or why they exited or what they're doing and just, you know, expect to have the same results that, that you have. And I think I think what a lot of people don't understand is one of two things. One is that, it's like you said, you don't trust that person to trade the same way they do. You don't know why they're in. You don't know why they, they'll get out. So if for any reason that their phone dies in the middle of that trade – and they're not able to tell you to get out and you lose, it's like, well, it leads to number two, which is that your money is in somebody else's hands. And I don't believe that anybody should have, when when they believe they're chasing something where they can control their income, I don't believe that they should be comfortable with their money still being in somebody else's hands. Because that's why people say, oh, I want to quit my job to start trading because with a job, your money's in somebody else's hands. But it's like, if okay, if you want to do that and you want to pursue that like personal route, then why are you still leaving your job to go do exactly what you're doing again. And at the same time, it's trading signals and stuff like that. Like it is such a beat around the bush of financial advice. Like it, it is it right too, yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> at fine, like how is like, I mean, it is. I believe, it's just I the believe way that you say that it, it doesn't make it. Groups will get shut down very soon. Well, some already have, right? Yeah, some of them have. And I believe they're going to, they're going to clock down harder as more financial scams start to come out because like, I don't think people understand how covered and coveted the financial industry is and how careful you have to be if you do not have licenses. And I just felt like like the second I feel like this feels wrong, I have to pull back. I can't mm -hmm. do it anymore. And that's just that's when I was like, guys, we're going education. And a lot of people felt like, no, it's because all those people left. But we had that in place before anybody left. We were like, we're and that's not. the thing, like any craft, for yeah. example, like they're not teaching you. They're teaching you how to weld, right? They're not doing your welds for you. They're not saying, okay, you have a welding job coming up. Let me do this weld next to you and, and you copy me. Or, mm -hmm. hey, you want to be an artist? Here's exactly how I paint and here's how I do things, you know? They're teaching you the concept of it, how to do it, and it's your job to, you know, you like that. do it, you know, for how best works for you. Are you ready for the next one? Oh, man. No, it's not, it's not a bad one. Oh, yeah. The next one after that's kind of crazy, but... What would you do if trading was never an option? I'd do whatever the Lord told me to do. <laughs> no, actually, I'd probably be a real estate agent or something. You think you would have gotten your degree? Yeah. And I want to give a giant shout out to every single person that's in college, that's completed college, because like college is quite possibly one of the most difficult things ever. I was in college for a year and a half and like I was I was like I was really busy partial but when I was really in there when there was no business but I was just that struggling college student College really tests people I mean you you typically don't have a lot of money you have a the most distractions you're going to have probably with yeah. you know the parties and everything else and the schoolwork especially the beginning courses are meant to weed out the people who aren't taking it yeah, serious. It is. It's, so. it, it's incredibly difficult yeah. and it's, Oh my gosh, like college is, it's not it, but it, it pushes you to be disciplined and instill discipline and actually take something serious. And that's why I think that a lot of businesses that require people like the question you're asking me earlier, does college get you a better job? A lot of people that require those degrees, they know that, okay, I can teach you and mold you how I want you. Yeah. Like same thing with like an athlete, like you get somebody that's a receiver coming out of college, right? But they get drafted and they become a, cornerback or whatever right they have the attributes that are there i can mold you and shape you into what what i want you same because thing with jobs coming out of college work at it, right i understand it that you're able to learn material that you're able to follow instructions that you are disciplined that you are timely that you show up in a timely manner that you know all these things that you're reliable and that's what i'm looking for and then i can shape you and mold you into what i you know yeah. what i think 
is best. No, I agree. And I think that the biggest misconception social media has fed people is that college is a scam. College may not be for you, but it's not a scam. And I think a lot of people are uneducated and miseducated even when they say that. They don't even understand why they're saying it. They're just like, well, I became rich without college, but that doesn't make it false. Oh, why do they charge you this much? It doesn't make it false. The thing is, college is not put in place and jobs do not look at, oh, you went to college as you're smarter than. They take it as, oh, so you can actually go through rigorous curriculum and come out on top. You are impressive. That's why they look at college degrees on applications and say, I like that you went to college, not I don't. And that's something that my dad told me, like I would always complain to I'm like, I don't even need to know this. This is stupid. And he'd be like, you know, he'd always be like, Hayden, like, quit saying that. You know, like, it doesn't matter if it's stupid. You're learning how to learn. You're proving that you can learn, you know. Yeah. And the ability to learn is actually a valuable thing. The ability to be able to absorb information and at the same time um, be able to follow instructions. Because no matter where you are in your life, you're going to be following instructions. You still follow instructions. You follow the instructions from the law. You follow, the, you know, the pr- you're still below the president. You're still below the law. You're still be- like wh- wherever you are in life, you're going to have somebody giving you. Direction. And I don't think people realize that when they say like, oh, I'm so free and I can do whatever I want because like everybody is a slave to somebody. Oh, yeah. Like I am a slave to all the clients that have requests. The hands, our business is made to cater to the clients. If somebody works a job, you let's not call it a slave. You have to account to or report to your boss. If you're not at a job, let's say you're a parent, you have to report to your children. You have to be there for your children. Let's say you are a child. You have to report to your parents. Like In every area of life, even as a student, you know, you have to report to your teacher. Right. The teacher has to report to the principal. The principal exactly. has to report to the superintendent. Like, Everyone has to report to somebody. That idea of freedom is not a thing. And I feel like if you didn't have a lot of that in life, like, I guess dependency yeah. or whatever i feel like it'd be a lot of empty like if you didn't have kids that depend if you didn't have a wife or a girlfriend that depended on you and and you depend on her and you know i feel like that life is a lot of it is dependency you know like yeah. it's good to have things like that like i feel like if you were completely free nobody told you what to do you didn't have any kids no job nothing like, seems like what, it is, kind of what is what is there <laughs> yeah. to stand for or work for yeah. or work towards yeah next to the question that i said what really is within sex all right we're gonna open up our bibles everybody um no we're actually gonna open up our bibles to first corinthians 6 and i believe the verse is 7 i was wrong on the first corinthians 6 or 7 okay It is 16. I knew it was 1 Corinthians 6, 16. Anyways, and it says, this is the New Living Translation of the Bible. It says, and don't you realize that if a man joins himself to a prostitute, and it's really just describing a person, he becomes one body with her. For the scriptures say the two are united into one. But the spirit who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Right. So what people don't understand when it comes to sex is that like a lot of people treat it as just a feeling like this is just a feeling like I, I'm, I'm feeling this way and I need to let it out and I want to let it out with somebody versus with myself, whatever it is. What they don't realize is that when you have sex with somebody spiritually, you merge into one. So that means you take all of their great traits and you take all of their terrible traits. So when people like to say, and I believe life and death is the power of the tongue, so I'm very careful on what I say. But when people say, oh, I'm fighting demons. Oh, my demons are taking over me. I have all these demons. But the thing is that when you're saying that, and if people do have these demons inside of them, people that have anger problems, people that have, you know, bad habits, whatever it is, Shout out to this plane that wants to be part of our conversation. (laughs) It's so loud. I know, right? (laughs) When people are dealing with different spirits and demons, then they now, you now become one with that person. So when you say I'm being so free, what you're doing is you're ruining your body. You're ruining who you are. And you're giving yourself more obstacles to cross than you need to, you know? And the reason why they say like marriage is the most powerful thing that you could have within, you know, your relationship with God and another person is because now you have someone that you've formed into one and you guys are meant to fight battles with each other, which is why you can't commit adultery because now if you cheat on someone, you're bringing in different, you know, issues and problems. So I don't think people understand the spiritual aspect of that. And I'm a Christian. I'm very spiritual in, in that regard. But I don't think people understand that. So they just, just, they're just like, well, I want to do it and I want to have it. And they don't realize how much it can hold them back. And it's a difficult temptation, you know, like it's, it's one that it's really hard to fight for a lot of people, which is fine, you know, but as long as they're trying and they understand the meaning behind it, then I think they'll probably be a little bit smarter and how yeah. they go about I it. Think, yeah, I think a lot of people just have the wrong idea about what it is. They just think that, it's just like, you know, it's something that I want freedom. right now, yeah. and so I'm going to do it right now. A lot, and, and a lot of people don't have that discipline, like, you know, a diet, for example. Yeah. You know, like a lot of people don't want to go on, I want chocolate cake right now, so that's what I'm going to get, and that's what I'm going to eat, right? But you have this but thing that's meant for long-term. one person yeah. that you can save for one person, you know, but instead I want to give it away right now. Then again, you know, 
nobody's perfect. I'm not perfect. But yeah. a lot of people, they just go about it thinking the wrong way about it, I think. No, I agree. And I, I think the chocolate cake example is so powerful because it's like the chocolate cake is, is great today. It'll be great tomorrow. It'll be great in two weeks. It won't be great when you get type 2 But what am I going to give my wife a, you know? a half-eaten chocolate cake now? <laughs> you know? Like, I've already given the chocolate cake away. Well, I mean, but, and I think it's also about the long-term ramifications of having so much chocolate cake. Is like, you will blow up. You yeah. will have problems in life. You will struggle mm -hmm. in the way that you operate, in the way that you work, in the way that you're seen, in the way that you're treated. Like, it's going to really affect you. And I think everyone should see themselves as that big, like, glorious chocolate cake. Like, I don't know if you've ever watched Matilda, but there's, like, a scene where there's this, like, big chocolate. It's such a chocolatey, beautiful chocolate cake. And, like, there's just this kid who's, like, swallowing it. And every time I think of a chocolate cake, I just think of how good that thing looks. Because it just looks I so good. It. You know, you got to watch it. My favorite dessert, though, is definitely... Lemon um, meringue pie. No, I'm playing. No, it wow. is the molten lava chocolate cake from Chili's. Oh, I got to try that now. You haven't tried it? No, I've never... I've, I've never oh. tried it. I'm going to try it. My girlfriend and I, or fiance, yeah. get it all the time, and we just split it. And But when my brothers and I used to get it, my parents would always take us and let us get one. And they would put it in the middle of the table. And, like, I'm not kidding you, it would be gone in, like, literally 10 seconds. Like, we would be racing to get it because we would all be eating <laughs> off the same one, you know? Yeah. And we'd just be freaking... Oh, my gosh. Having that many boys is scary. How do you deal with black tax? So, for those of you who don't know, black tax is essentially the idea in mind that as a black individual, you are spent having to take your wealth and your riches and take care of the people that you came from, so your family, your aunts, your uncles, your grandparents, rather than take that wealth and move it towards future generations to now build something long lasting. And so it's said that most um, ethnicities, most cultures don't have to deal with this, whereas white people in America or just in pretty much any country, they are able to have a solid foundation. This is where like the term old money will come from, where they're constantly putting money forward and you know same thing with Asians and Indians, well, Indians are Asian, but you know, and then with black people, it's like, wait, we got such a late start we have to now give to those behind us rather than working for those for us and then those behind us end up eating up what we have to the point we can't build for the future so how do i deal with it um i've learned the power of saying no it's very difficult especially when you know like your family is you know the number one thing to you your friends are really important to you but i also like i fought with it a lot of times because i'm very much a giver and i do give a lot to my family i take care of my family i made sure i did that but I, i'm also very frugal and prudent to where i don't do something unless i know financially it a hundred percent will make sense just money wise i don't spend a lot like I save a little too much probably and so my thing is I don't I don't try to give to everyone and I notice some people and a lot of people the second they start making money they want everyone to know and I think it's the worst mistake you can make like if it wasn't for social media I would have never told anybody how much I was making and like social media I still regretted afterwards like dang why was I telling the whole world when I you know but in that moment when you come from nothing you're excited to tell everybody like i made it out i made it out but when you do that suddenly everyone can't like they just have a whole bunch of problems this person can't pay their rent this person's struggling this person's somebody is in the hospital this like it's like and now you are seen as the main provider and i just always think in my head i'm like well if i didn't have this money who was the person that was supposed to save you what would you have done would you have gone you know bankrupt would you have gotten evicted like i do believe that god works in everyone's life differently and i never want to get in the way of what god has for someone i think some people have to learn a difficult way you can't keep saving people or they'll never learn how to actually make it work so you just you, you got to learn the power of saying no and sometimes don't be like no i'm not going to give that but just be like hey you know right now i just I can't afford that. It doesn't mean you don't have it, but you just can't afford it's to get smart. that. Yeah, it's it's just not something you can do at the yeah. moment. So. And like one thing is growing up as a kid and still today, like my family, like my mom, my dad, my brothers, yeah. they're number one, you know. But eventually yeah. when you have your own family, they have to be number they're one. number one. When you have your wife and her for you, your husband and your kids, now they're number one, yeah. you know, and that's your number one priority. And so I think you make a good point as to you know, making sure that your future family and your future kids that they'll be taken care of as well. Yeah. And making sure that, you know, that even though you might have it right now, that you're, you're planning ahead and that you're saving ahead. Because you only hold people back. Like you had all this money, you spent it taking care of your first family. And then when your second family comes, you might not have it. You're anymore. right back in the same position as your first exactly. family. And, that's and it restarts. I know there is at least one indicator that you use that made your life easier. What is it? The RSI, it's the Relative Strength Index, um, but it tracks within, it's like a 60 or 90 or 45 day period, how stocks moved or just like whatever that currency or index, whatever it is, 
how that instrument moved and then it tells you like okay now it's overbought and if it's overbought that means you'll sell price and you can make money off price falling and if it's oversold which it actually be down here you can buy it and make money off price going up it was helping me at first i was making that money i was like oh i'm so cold i'm gonna just load up positions load up it's oversold i'm gonna load up i'm gonna load up and that thing what people think is that it does this when actuality it goes like this mm-hmm and so well, you it's a lagging get, indicator. Yeah. And you can get stuck waiting and, on it to buy or yeah. sell. And it's just moving in a straight line. Right. And with options, you lose money when something moves slowly. So if it doesn't move in your direction. Right. Then you're, and that's because I use the RSI as well. Typically, your RSI will have like your 30, your point at 30. And if it drops below 30, it's oversold. Mm -hmm. Your 90 is overbought. Um, and so that's kind of how you use it. There's a lot of different uh, types of RSIs, especially if you go on like trading view where people can just create them. There's a lot of different kinds of RSIs. Something that I've ran into a lot is I'll teach somebody about the RSI and then they immediately think that, oh, all I have to do is buy when it's oversold or uh, sell when it's overbought, right? Mm -hmm. But what like, what I want people to understand is that trading, it can be easy when you learn it, but it's not that easy. Like uh -huh. if it was that easy and you could make that much like everybody in the world would be doing it if it was as easy as hey i'm gonna buy when it's oversold i'm gonna <laughs> sell when it's overbought like no it's a lagging indicator like yes you can use it uh you know you. you can use it to help you and you can use it in combination with a couple other things in yeah, combination like with your technical notes yeah as a confluence but i don't think you're gonna have great success using it solely but i do think it's a good indicator i do like it yeah i thought it was pretty good until one day i lost um eleven thousand dollars using it <laughs> and i was like i'm done with you you're finished kelly mm-hmm are you into girls? And I know this might seem like a weird question and I wasn't going to put it on here, but this question was actually asked a lot. So I think they need to know, are you into girls? Do you think I'm into girls? Hey? I do not think that you are, <laughs> unless you're about to tell me differently. <laughs> no way. No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> I am not into girls. Um, I got that question a lot and I was like, bro, am I ugly? Like, do I look like a man? Like, do I, like, what do I look like? So I started to really deep dive into like my older videos and my older photos and stuff like that. I realized that how I used to dress gave off more tomboyish vibes because I used to resell sneakers. And so when you resell shoes, a lot of your collection and the way you dress is going to be based off hype beast culture is what they call it and so you become a sneakerhead, and so you wear like the nicest shoes and kind of like the supremes and the babes and like the girls have that same look they're not wearing like really girly clothing it's just more so they call hype beast right and that was just always what i knew because that was the industry i was in and so i started dressing that way and then when i then saw basically like i guess all the comments i, I started like i was like what the heck <laughs> Like, where y'all getting this from? And But when I watched it, I was like, I could see it. Like, I wasn't dressed like a girl. I was just, it was always chill outfits, chill. And I don't, I don't leave the house. So a lot of the times I'm not actively going out and shopping and trying to look better and trying to do all that stuff. Um, But like I said, it was the industry I was in. And even now that I'm more into the finance realm and like just having a public influence, my style has definitely had to change. Um, I'd hired a stylist at a point because I was like, yeah, I need to fix this. And I think she made me even worse. But I, I sent her Chelsea. And Chelsea has the best outfits. I think I sent her, oh, I forgot her name. It wasn't Heather. Christine, Christine. Christine dresses up really nice. And I don't know where she like missed the bar because I was very specific. She made me a whole branding page. And then she started putting me in these oversized baggy clothing. And I was like, hey, you know, like I get swallowed and it, it's not looking right. And this is baggy. And she was like, girl, but this is what's in. This is fresh. And, you know, I just I eventually stopped working with her because I was like, I'm looking worse than than how I looked before I came to you. So um, but now I think my style has definitely changed a little bit. I'm a very business casual person. You can ask Hayden that he'll tell you all the time. Uh, me and Brunello Cuccinelli are best friends. I love shopping there. It's just very business casual type of stuff. But yeah, I, 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 I'm not into girls, but I see where people saw that. And so I'm actively trying to change that narrative because like it is a little bit uncomfortable because, you know, it's just not who I am, but yeah. Why the promise of price locked in for life just to abandon all loyal cash capital members who couldn't afford the new platform? It's giving more focus on money slash sales and not education as you claim. You're, actu you're not actually helping people when there's an ulterior motive and doing it for your benefit. And then in quotation marks, greed. I'm like the, the, the number one person on this planet that does not care about money. Like greed is not the case. What happened is we found out that we just couldn't migrate everyone over because that's almost like stealing a subscription. And then two, we also wanted to really weed out people who weren't as serious and people who were. And unfortunately, some people who were serious couldn't afford it. And we did our best at 
and this is for our pre-launch because we're not even fully launched, but we did our best to do 50% off and be like, hey, this is the best we can do, but this is not the same platform. This is not the same company. This is not the same in the way we're operating. So what you're used to, you're getting 10 times, 100 times more. And so we can't price it at the same price, you know, and you still have access to the platform, but we have to shut it down because there's yeah. just no value there. Like, I just don't believe that it's what yeah. it, it could have been and what it once was at a point. And like, like you said earlier, like the pricing and stuff for a lot of the stuff isn't there. And, you know, we gave it to them 50% off and stuff. And we're still like building out a lot of stuff and making a lot of stuff for the people that are in there. Yeah. And it's going to be amazing. We have a lot of it's going to be great. And yeah. it's going to be it's going to be more expensive than way more expensive than it is now and I say that with all confidence, well, actually, you know. It won't be not for the platform. No. I mean, the thing is, I don't believe anything is, is expensive. I believe stuff is worth it or not worth it. Yeah. But when people are looking at price to like that's expensive or it's not, but it's only expensive if you can't afford it. That does not mean the value is there or isn't there. People need to look at it like is this valuable or is this not valuable for me in this current moment? But I don't want to give them the wrong idea and them thinking that what is there right now is going to be more expensive. What's coming is going oh, to be more yeah, expensive. Yeah, because no, what's no, coming no, no, is, yeah. is... Is high level, yeah, it's high quality content that we've put hundreds of thousands of dollars into. You know, So it's it's not something that anybody's ever done. But yeah, it's, it's definitely not a being greedy type <laughs> of play. It's just a... Our services are different. We're not anything you'll ever see on the internet or have ever seen. So we cannot... And, and the, the biggest thing, first and foremost, is that we just couldn't migrate everyone over. We tried it. And they were like, you can't do that because... It's it's basically going to be like, because then in that case, you could just keep migrating people over to different stuff they didn't sign up for. And they were like, you're going to have to have everybody cancel and, and redo it. And I was like, well, you know, we're a different thing anyways. So. The thing is, is like, if you look at any business in the world, they're selling something for a price. And it's not like, yes, there are greedy businesses out there, but a lot of them are. You have to make money to be able to operate. Like these yeah. things that we do are not cheap, you know? <laughs> Is it? No, no way. People don't understand that. They think that, they think that every dollar that goes to, to, like their subscription is going straight to us and then we just get to put it in our pocket no like even even for me i think a mistake i've made on social media and a lot of people do is like saying that the business's money is mine but it's, it's not the business you know? is what the business's money is mine so it's like oh yeah oh the business does this much so i make this much i don't make that much you know i lived i lived off trading now i live primarily off like youtube and like you know i don't pay myself from the business like every time are like CFOs telling us like oh who do you, like who do you want to pay I'm like don't put me on there take me off take me yeah. off. don't pay me you know because I just I want to reinvest everything back into the business to make more and then that can pay everyone but I and just, she she really does guys she oh, um you. you know hyping me up. she doesn't and I'm part of the finance thing um for the team financial she's resources. not even on the payroll yeah. for the the subscriptions and stuff like the stuff that she gets and stuff is her personal brand and things like that and then like a lot of the business money is just reinvested right back into the business as well as some of her own personal brand money. Like she's always putting it back into the business, trying to better things, you yeah. know, for y'all and build out something that's going to be amazing. Yeah. So. I, I don't think too many people spend their business money like it's theirs. And it's like, but again, my biggest thing is I don't care about money. I want to do something better for people because that goes way further and mm -hmm. people just aren't wired like that. And that's okay for them. Not for me. When you get married, will you post a vlog about it or will you always keep your love life private. I think my love life will be private for probably until I get engaged. I was in a relationship for a year and nobody knew. I mean, some people probably knew, you know, probably. But, you know, I just, it just didn't work. I think that's partially my fault to blame. Uh, I got so consumed at the work and kind of who I, I was, not was, but like who I was becoming. Not like clout wise, but just I wanted to be this person who was an overachiever for other people that I neglected the person that, you know, was really caring about me. But I think that I could do better. But yeah, I wouldn't post them because like, then that's just embarrassing. You know, I'm, I'm out here posting this person, look at me in this person, and then it doesn't work. And then it's like, that's just embarrassing. So when I get engaged, and that's more concrete, then maybe you'll see something about it. When I get married, then you'll probably see something. But it would never be my full image unless I feel like it can help someone. You know, maybe I'll be a relationship coach. Under I don't know. No, I'm playing. <laughs> but don't do that to me. Why haven't you learned your mother's tongue the Igbo language? Igbo. Ig Igbo language? Yeah, Igbo. It's a tribe in Nigeria. It's my tribe, actually. Igbo. So from. why haven't you learned your mother's language fee? Igbo language. If I am wrong, prove it to me by speaking some lines on your next YouTube video. If I am right, I challenge you to speak just a little on the video. I will be very happy to hear those Igbo words uh, Igbo coming words. from your mouth. You just learn it at least 
that shows your true identity as an African child? I didn't know my true identity uh, lied in. I mean, I, I guess, uh, you know, to them, I'd probably say, I beg hapumaka, which means leave my arm in Igbo. It means like, leave me alone. Like, uh, leave me, don't ask me say to Say it again? Speak. Well, I beg means like, please. And then hapumaka. So it's like hapumaka. So like, leave my aka's arm. Uh, you know, so that's that's what I say. But like, I, I grew up in America, like yeah. pretty much my entire life. I've been in Nigeria. Uh, I was just there last Christmas slash New Year's in 2022 slash 2023. Um, so earlier this year. And like, you know, I love it. I'm so proud to be Nigerian. But my parents were fortunate enough that they could come to America and raise me here. And it changed the trajectory of my life. Trajectory. Yeah. And so like when you're constantly speaking English, I don't learn the language. I understand the language. I can't speak it completely fluently. Yeah. And, you know, it's just growing up here. And when I was younger, like, I think being an African, like a Nigerian is cool now. But when I was younger, it was like made yeah. fun of a lot. People thought it was so weird. Like, Do you live in huts and have lions? And I was like, <laughs> no. You know, but yeah, that, well, one that's thing, the response. One thing though. I will say from what I at least see, I guess, from the outside looking in and being able to work with you, having the yeah. privilege to work with you is that, like, I think that you are very proud and you know proud to be where you're from which would be where nigeria nigeria yeah so you're very proud to be from there you talk about it a lot and even like the thanksgivings and stuff you bring you know food that's local from there and have me try it and stuff yeah. and I, you know I oh do my gosh hayden ate fufu, uh, fufu and egusi <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was good yeah yeah was- I didn't quite know I how to eat it. I think that one had too I'm much learning. palm oil, so it was a little bit bitter. It's usually more on the sweeter side. The only thing that threw me off was the the stuff that you used to dip. The fufu. Yeah, yeah. I, I I thought it was like bread, and I thought that it was uncooked <laughs> bread. I didn't know that it was. It's You're a root, like, this right? This is just dough. It's a root. It's a it's a yam. So there's there's Which different is a types. Root? Uh, I mean, I get uh, I guess. But yeah, so that kind of threw me off because I was expecting it to be bread. Yeah. So you're but, like, I mean, it this wasn't isn't what bread tastes yeah. like. This <laughs> I was like, yeah. are you in a committed relationship, not talking about with God, Dang, that was an gonna actual person? Answer. That was going to be my answer. <laughs> is, is, <laughs> is that, yeah, with, with the, Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ, I, I'm in a committed relationship with, okay, I won't joke. I, no, I'm not actually in a committed relationship right now. I was going to joke and I was going to say with everyone on the team, and every single customer that makes up the business, but I won't joke. Um, well, no, I mean, I, that is a relationship. A relationship is just... A commit, I'm a committed relationship with my family, with my friends. Like, I don't plan to ever leave them. Not a significant other, though. Not a significant other. I told you, if, if that guy decides he wants me to scream, I will yell. Like, if he, sa- if be... he says, Kelly, I need you to fly, I will become the plane. Like, I'm telling you, I'll do it. What if he said, Kelly, stop trading? I do, I do it. I haven't no traded in like way. six months though, you know, from What if he said Kelly stop teaching? Okay. He then he has to go. <laughs> I can't do that. Kelly? What? I actually don't know the answer to this one. Are you still a virgin? Be what honest. What kind of questions are these? Like I was I was trying to debrief myself on how I'd answer these and I was like, How crazy can people get? When I first posted this, I was like, How crazy can people get? And I realized like people think about too many things that, that like have nothing to do with what they should think about. Social media corrupts your brain. Um, the other day I was having a conversation with uh, a friend and they asked me if I was a virgin and I said that I am indeed a virgin to Waffle House. I've never been there. Um, so if you ever want to take me to Waffle House, you should definitely take me to Waffle House because I well, you need I to go. I like I like itch. A Waffle House. You need to go. I need to go to Waffle House. Waffle House? Oh, but it's like are so good. they're so dirty and like I'm a clean freak. Who cares? So like I like I get you know the feeling when you see trypophobia? Yes. I feel that when like I see dirty then things. Then I'll just bring you waffles from Waffle House. Okay, sometime. we can do that. <laughs> okay. And then you'll make me a non Waffle House virgin. So are we moving over the question? We're moving to the next question. Sounds good. <laughs> what are you looking for in a man? Are you open to dating right now? I would describe the man, but I think that'd be too obvious. Um, no, I, I just, I think too many people, and I think this is probably going to answer another question that's on there so we could just skip it because I know we're, we've been, we've been talking. It's been a great conversation though. I think a lot of people feel that a woman who makes money wants a man who makes money. And that's quite possibly one of the biggest misconceptions. Obviously she does, but that's not the most important thing. She wants a man who's driven, a man who's working towards something, a man who wants to be something and isn't just sitting around like, oh, you make the money. Like. Uh, but most importantly, any woman wants a man who listens to her, who makes her better, who tries to be active 
um, in her life who doesn't just say like, oh, because this is your womanly role, you're only going to do this. But it's like mutually beneficial. So like, I'll help you do the dishes. I'll help you clean around the house. I'll help you do these things if I know you're too tired to do it. But also a man who understands what my purpose and goal is in life. So he's not going to get in the way of that and be like, oh, you know, you're always doing this and you're always doing this. And do you always have to do that? And, you know, I, I'm trying to find the balance. Not right now because I am single, but I'm trying to find the balance of making time for relationships and then making time for work. But then when it comes to like family and those relationships, I still incorporate those. And making time for me and hobbit, hobbies. Yeah. I do think, like you said, you're trying to figure out how to balance the time. I do think that it's mutually beneficial with both as your benefit, as your business will benefit, you know, your relationship and vice versa. Your relationship will yeah. benefit your business because, you know, whatever man you do find should be somebody that is supportive and somebody that's, your, you know, that's there for you and somebody that helps you. And, you know, when you have something wrong at work or you need somebody to talk to, he's there for you. And so I feel like that, you know, when you do finally find that right combination and stuff that it'll be mutually beneficial. Yeah, no, I, I agree. What was the other part of that question? I was like, oh, and am I dating right now? Are you open to dating right now? I think when I was first really building, I, I like a relationship I just <clears throat> couldn't have time for. I think right now, sometimes I, I don't long. think that's really a question. If, I like think right that now? if the right man walked into your life, it doesn't matter if you're open to dating or not, he's going to attract you it, and you're not going to have much to say. I think the only reason for me it does because I want to make sure I'm pouring just as much in. Which is why I was saying like in the past, I didn't feel like when I was in my past relationship, I was pouring what I should have in. And, you know, it, it really hurt it and hurt them. And like that hurt me. I feel like right now I'm almost longing for one. Like I, I think I've fallen in love with like love. Um, Are you Christian? <laughs> Hands down. I love the Lord Jesus Christ. He's my father. He's my savior. He savior. He is Jehovah Jireh, the Alpha and Omega. And uh, I will be Christian so the day I die. And even when I die, I will still go to heaven and still <laughs> continue to be Christian. So, yeah. Why were you suicidal? Oh, wow. That's a story. That's a story. That's a story. I have told that story. i got to think of what video so that I don't have to tell it in I know you did entirety. it on Instagram. I did. I I, I've done it. I did do a whole post about it. But basically, in short, um, after my cousin died, um, I lost the cousin on February 12th of 2019. I then lost the cousin on February 15th of 2019, so three days later. So I lost two cousins who I grew up with in three days, and with, like within one week. And uh, my birthday I spent at a memorial. like a, It was like a weight-keeping when you go and like kind of celebrate their life um and then spent the rest of march at a funeral and then i only had one friend at that time my very best friend and at the most like the the darkest part of my life she just left like just ghosted me disappeared so then it was like i thought i was dealing with two deaths and i'm dealing with three deaths because now i've lost my best friend it was just very lonely and it was really difficult for me and i just started to get to the point where i was like i can't really talk to anybody about this because i don't have friends and then on top of that my family's going through it too so i can't really turn to them and it just took me to a very dark place to the point where i was like i i was the only person and i say this quite literally that stopped me from actually taking my life was god because the same week that i was going to he came to me through my dad's pastor who i'd never met in my life and like he was just like you know this is what god told me to tell you and you know tell me stuff about my life um and i was like what the me like i'm i'm trying to go see him why you want me to still stay here you know so um but yeah it's kind of like the short and condensed version but yeah i've i've been there and i i i never discount depression because i know that when people go there it is it is a dark place. And like some people are like, well, how can you be depressed? You need to do this. Like depression doesn't exist. It just, doesn't, but it's like, it does. That's and what my mom like. It's, it's huge. I, I struggled with depression, but I don't remember it very well because like your mind a lot of times will, and I talked about this on my life Throw it away, video or whatever, but yeah, like it blocks it out so that you don't remember it. So I don't remember yeah. a lot of it, but I would tell my mom in high school, like, it's not real. Like, you know, like whatever did it, but she was like, it's literally like, it's literally, uh, imbalance in your brain like it's literally scientifically proven but i actually take medicine for it yeah. because of what happened but i don't remember it that well so i don't like have a lot to say about depression because i can't really remember being depressed yeah but there was a like over a year period of my life I, I think when it, i was young it must have been really serious if the people in your family still like they still feel the effects of your depression you know yeah well i mean i had a i had an autoimmune disorder like i talked about and it just, it caused like a lot of stuff in my life. You know, I lost all my friends. I was no longer, I was a super good athlete. I was no longer able to perform sports and da, 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 da. Yeah. And it was super tough. And so, which I guess the antidepressants did help, but I, I still take them. I don't, 
I don't really know why, but <laughs> I still do. Well, I hope with or without them that you were always happy. Oh, I'm happy you now. Know, I'm and I here. can't remember. I'm always here. And I am too. <laughs> but I can't I can't remember not being happy now, but there was a time in my life where I definitely wasn't. So, yeah. so I do know that it is, it is true. But don't know if this is a if this is personal, but how to take a loss or blow a blow an account. This is the easiest way to take a loss. Go on YouTube or Instagram and see somebody that bought a Ferrari or a Lamborghini or like a crazy house, show you how they made 100000 in a day or 50000 in a day, and then decide to join their signals group and then decide to take a trade when you've never actually learned how to trade. That's the easiest way to take a loss. If you want to avoid a loss, then education is the number one thing. If you want to avoid blowing an account, well, you need to first accept the fact that you're going to lose money when you start trading. So don't trade unless you're starting with money that like disposable income that if you threw in this pool right here, you wouldn't care if it disappeared. And understand that this is my tax for learning how to do something exactly. that's supposed to make me more. And that's and a education. Couple, yeah. A couple things thing. I have to say about that is when I experienced losses, one thing my dad always told me is education does cost money, you know, and whether you're doing that through the form of trial and error, whatever it is, it costs money. Yeah. Second thing I'll say is that preventing losses, I think that you will have losses. It's just, a, you know, you, you will have losses through trading. You will. You can prevent a lot of those losses early on, I think, by paper trading. And then the last thing I'll say, like you can learn a lot of technical analysis and things like that. You can't really do the emotions, but you can prevent a lot of the like errors that you would have made. Like, oh, I wish I would have, you know bought closer to the ask so I got filled immediately and I could have actually entered when I wanted to or whatever it might be oh. or sold and sold closer to the bid so I could have sold immediately and I didn't get stuck holding the bag whatever it might be right you yeah. learn that through paper trading you don't have to learn it the hard way like I did the third thing I was going to say is when it comes to like blowing an account because there were multiple times where I had blown an account and lost a lot of money and stuff and it like literally just broke me just destroyed me and my dad he would tell me he'd be like I would like call like I remember the time I was ready to actually like give up and I was like I'm done I call my dad and he was like so this is it he's like you're gonna give up now and I was like, I don't know, I just can't do it. Like I've tried. And he's like, so all this time, money, effort, he's like, it's all for nothing now, right? I was like, hey. I don't know. I was like, I just can't. He's like, he's like, you know, he's like, you've gone through all these different things in your life. He's like, I know you're not the kind to give up. He's like, you know, and luckily I had support of people like my mom and my dad. Um, and he's like, you know, you know that it's possible. Are you, you know, are you just telling me that you're not able to do it? He's like, all that, all that effort that you've put in, he's like, it's all going to go to waste now if you give up now. And I was like, I can't give up now. <laughs> no, that's that's a big one. Too many people discount how much they've tried for how much how many results they've had and I think it should be flipped. Mm -hmm. You know, you should put your trials ahead of your results and value the time you spent and try and get results from that. But yeah. Right. Kelly, what happened to the twenty five K giveaway? What happened to the twenty five K what happened to the twenty five K giveaway? The twenty five K giveaway. I don't know what video I'm posting first, so if it's this video then they're gonna have seen the winners throughout this video. If it's not this video, they're gonna have seen the winners throughout that. But what happened was I posted that video and we were on an insane binge over the past two, three months of just working. And you can attest to that. Like we've just been locked in on like building this thing out and building out this company and, and trade it and everything that it'll, you know, entail. That I just I didn't have the time to sit down and, and film a YouTube video. She really didn't. I used to have hobbies like playing video games and stuff. I don't really have that hobby anymore. <laughs> oh my gosh, that makes me feel. Too, you know, no, we're between, 2K tonight. not because we're playing two K tonight. If the, if the screen because of works. because of uh, school, but also work, and then also my fiance. So oh. Oh. it's like juggling, but I can juggle. So <laughs> I can juggle three things at once. Like this is actually fact. Like I can juggle. If you want to go get me three things, I can juggle three things at once. I can't juggle four. So I have my family, fiance, work, and my school so you unfortunately i had to drop the ball fiance? of playing video games yeah, <laughs> yeah. no I, I i get that no i think uh the giveaway it was just literally just i wanted to put out the best content possible and i think something people also don't talk about is you do get burnout and i was like where do i want to go next in my content because i don't want to keep making breakdown videos and this i think it <clears> cheapens <throat> my overall value because i'm not actually giving value by just saying the most basic information for youtube and so um yeah i just i couldn't make a video and that's why we are currently in la right now because i was like i need to just make videos for the next couple months so that i can focus on the business and just have those videos on autopilot and then we can also film for trade it because we are bringing the absolute best con con Quality. We are doing better than anybody else has ever done, and we're putting a lot of money into it and making sure it's really great. So, yeah. Me and my friend got into a heated debate on whether you made your first million from cash capital or from trading. I said from trading. He said from cash capital. Please answer this, Kelly. I want to prove him wrong. Girl, I'm so sorry. <laughs> you lost it.
Um, I have not made a million dollars from trading. I did not make my first million from trading. And to get there is quite possibly the most difficult thing to do. I've made over six figures. I think that's fairly easy. Whoa. I like to watch my wording. I don't want to say easy. I think it's... It's fairly easy when you are properly educated. There we go. Um, but to get to a million to do six figures ten more times, it feels like it feels like when you go up a ramp and then you have a <coughs> steep uphill battle. It's like, oh, that was easy. And then it's like, oh, wait a second. This is actually very difficult. When it came to the business, uh, it was just kind of out of my control. I couldn't control how many people were signing up. Like, you just don't control mm -hmm. that. Um, and so it actually started to overlap trading and just came way, way faster. And that's when, you know, after having, I'd say, fairly good success trading. Some people may say it was very good, but I don't, you know, every, it's, some people are million dollar traders. And so I don't want to be like, I've had all the success in the world. But um, I just kind of realized with my influence and who I am and what I can do and people that I can actually impact and touch. I was like, it just makes more sense to put more emphasis on the business. Because I could make all the money in the world I, trading. You know, I could pick up my phone, enter a trade right now and make money, but I it's think, not going to help anyone. I think what you have realized is that, yes, you can make money trading, but you can take a more significant role in running a company like this and building out something that's going to be much more beneficial to yeah. much more people. And you can take your skills that you have learned from trading, your expertise that you have gained through trading, and you can use that to find people that you know will fill these roles properly as if you were there educating people, right? Like you yeah. can find individuals that you know, okay, he's going to do a good job. He truly cares about the customers. He truly cares about educating these people. And he knows a lot and he's a very good trader, you know? Yeah. So I'm going to put him in place here because my place, it might not be as a trader right now because I know there's a much bigger task at hand, which is... And I think that's okay. Like people, people always say in order to teach, you must still do. And I used to feel like, I'd be like, well, my professors are trying to teach me how to start a business they don't even have a business you know and maybe they had one in the past maybe they i think a lot of it is also experience i do if a professor didn't have a business i don't know if they should but a lot of times people retire and they're like well i i, I know i can do this multiple times over i want to do more and we have somebody who actually um filled out a job application that's very very impressive and they've made millions of dollars i think you remember this person and they were like my business is automated i, I just want to do more i want to impact more people i want to have a bigger role and that's just how like I felt is I was like, there's no point of me being able to reach millions of people. And I'm just here like, look at me trade. And they're all like, why can't I do it? You know, and that's not a decision that everyone would be able to make. Some people, yeah. it's like trading is all they want to do. We've had people that have come in. They're like, I just don't like educating. They're incredibly great at trading and they'd rather just do it rather than like teaching other people. And mm -hmm. that's fine. Yeah. But I just figured that. But I mean, that's not why the business made me more. But that's just the role that I've kind of taken and not trading as much. And, I, you know, even if I was to still trade, I wouldn't post it anymore. I just... Right. Why? What's it gonna do for you, knowing how much I made? You know. Yeah. So maturity <clears throat> is a beautiful thing. I've All right, that. everybody, and to finish off the night. Uh oh. Drum roll, please. Drum roll, please. We've been here for the tenth eight hours. question on this topic. Oh my gosh. Are you in a relationship? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I was so excited, and you said the tenth, and I was like, this. Which I think you've already answered questions. three times. <laughs> I am in a relationship with making people better in life because I feel that that is what's most important. And so I will live and die behind that. I will put my all into making sure people are better in each and every single thing that they do. And if I can't achieve that, then I'd call it a failed relationship. Um, but maybe I should start a vlog, like actually, actually vlog my life or something since you guys care so much about whether I'm not or not I'm in a relationship. Maybe I should do a dating Kelly's show. Kelly's dating life. Like <laughs> yeah. the Bachelorelli. <laughs> Kelly That's on funny. the Bachelor and I just Bachelorette and I just bring everybody. And hopefully that one guy is one of them and I would cheat the system and make sure he gets the final rose. But yeah. Now they're yes. all gonna be like, who is that guy? <laughs> I think I just I hurt probably more than I helped my case. Now I won't be like, are you in a relationship? It'll be like who That is guy that? is now gonna look at this and he's gonna figure out who he is and he's gonna be like, No way. <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna be like i don't want her i like why is she doing this this is embarrassing i didn't say his name so like. but like i said if that man tells me to jump i'm at i'm gonna ask how high so i think we're done on on those that, that was, was everything it. that was everything i think we got like over like two three hundred submissions and like you know a lot 12, of them were the same 15 hours but we got a lot of them done. yeah and so i because we try to pick the best ones, the juiciest ones, the ones that weren't just, what's your average risk to reward in a trade? You know, so, um, but thank you every single person for watching, for tuning in. Thank you to Hayden for being such an amazing host. Hayden's one of the funniest people you will ever meet. 
and like he acts like he doesn't tell jokes 24 7 but he is absolutely hilarious and genuinely one of my favorite people on this planet <laughs> thank you and i thank you for believing and trusting in our vision overall and of course helping to change so many people's lives because it, it is huge but absolutely. yeah hayden's birthday is also in a couple of days so if you're watching this you need to tell Hayden happy birthday because if you don't, he's going to cry. And if you do, we're going to know you stayed to the end of this video. So then you'll Ooh. get a little treat, you know. I'm never winking again. That was, you know, <laughs> that, this is over. But um, thank you to everybody for yes, watching. Thank you, everybody. And we appreciate it. Yeah, I hope you have a great night because I'm cold. I'm cold, too. I'm so cold. I'm freezing. All right, bye, guys. <laughs>